Hey, what's up guys? Today's video is going to be on how to use a double end bag. So stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys? Carlo here. And today I'm going to show you guys how to use a double end bag. Now this video is going to just cover the basics of using a double end bag. Meaning if you're very, if you're a beginner, this is your very first time using this double end bag is going to be, this is going to be the video for you. I'm not going to go too crazy with combinations and more of the technical aspects. That's going to be in another video. This is going to be the fundamentals of using a double end bag. Now, if you're like myself, a lot of us are stuck at home doing our home workouts. All the gyms are closed because of this coronavirus uh, that's going around. So a lot of new people using the double end bag to, to train in boxing, to get in their conditioning, their workouts in. Now, I wanted to apologize in advance. I've been sweating my butt off. I just got done with my own training session. And there's about 100 degrees here in Phoenix, so it's starting to heat up, which is a great thing uh, for us getting that workout in and putting in that work. Now, double end bag basics. There's a video that I, you can see uh, that I did on how to actually install one of these. I'm gonna uh, put that link down below in the description box. But I have my seven inch double end bag here. This is a medium size one. Um, they have five inch double end bags, which are smaller. And that more or less is to work a little bit more on precision. And they have larger ones uh, as well that are a little bit more for beginners that uh, I don't really recommend. I like to go with seven inches. This is a perfect size. They also have hourglass style, kind of a Mexican style double end bag. It looks like an hourglass. It has two bags together. And that's kind of to work some of the upper custom hooks to the body. Now the two things that this double end bag works the most important. I mean, it works pretty much everything, but the two functions of this bag that you want to focus on is going to be your hand and eye coordination. And the most important is going to be your timing. Now, you could be the fastest guy in the world, you can have the fastest punches, you could be the most powerful puncher in the world, but if you can't land your punches on your target, it doesn't matter. You want to be able to land, and this is what this device in this bag does, okay? So the other two things that it does is when you're hitting it, it simulates this being someone's head. So as it rebounds back and forth, you need to be able to intercept this bat and time it, just like a real opponent. The other thing it does for you is it works on your defense. So again, it's one of the very few bags, unlike the heavy bag you see back there, that you can actually work your head movement, get underneath an opponent's punches, slip out, pivot out, and work your defense as well, okay? And then lastly, just like in your heavy bag, you wanna simulate this being a real opponent, okay? You don't wanna get complacent. You don't wanna stand right in front of it the entire time. You want to move. You wanna be unpredictable, okay? Hitting this bag is not just hitting this hitting a bag. You're in a fight when you're hitting this. So with that mindset, you want to go into this like this is really an opponent in front of you. Now I know a lot of us will see guys just kind of going, that's more or less for conditioning. If they're just hitting it and there's no thought process going into it, that's more or less for conditioning, which is fine. But if you want to use this to its full maximum potential, then you want to be able to use this like you're really fighting somebody and getting there in the ring with somebody, okay? So, I do six rounds total typically when I work the double end bag. The first two rounds I usually do jabs only. The second, uh, the second round, the rounds I usually do are the one twos and the last two rounds I usually do just a combination of different punches, okay? So six rounds total. Now when you're hitting this bag, it's very important that you understand getting your boxing stance, hands up to your chin, chin tucked down, knee slightly bent, that your punches are in the perfect range, meaning that your target is at the end of your punches. That's a boxing term that a lot of people use, is make sure your, your target is at the end of your punches, meaning that when your punches land, you're fully committed to it, your, your punches and your knuckles are turned over, and the target is right at the end of the punch. If you're too close, you're now crowding your punches and you're not effectively transferring that power in your punch, so you're crowding your punch. Now, there is guys that work this bag up close that's more advanced for those of you that are more in-fighters, but that's for a different video. For now, fundamentally, you want to make sure that the bag stays at the end of your punches. That way your punches are getting their full extension. Same thing with the right hand. This forces you to rotate that back foot. When you pivot on the straight right and your shoulders rotate, the target is right there, okay? You don't want any bend in your elbow. If you're too close, now you have that bend. You're not getting the full maximum power transfer in your punches. So it's very important that your punches or your targets stay at the end of your punches. Okay, next as well is going to be making sure you don't telegraph your punches. Now this is a habit that I've had a hard time with as well. A lot of people do. 
is telegraphing, meaning that you have a kind of a slight hop or you kind of do a little bit of a motion before you throw the punch. And that's basically telling your opponent, hey, I'm about to hit you. So you want to make sure with this that you work fundamentally on not tele uh, uh, telegraphing your, your punches. Keep everything nice and crisp. Everything at the end of your punches and they use the correct form with this double end bag, okay? When this bag is rebounding, you want to make sure it has a good amount of rebound. If the bag is too tight and, it, and you see it doing that, it's, it's not really rebounding because the bungee cords or the elastic cords are too tight, you need to loosen it up. If it's too loose, it's okay for head movement, but you're not going to be able to hit it with the, the, the combination because it doesn't rebound as quickly. So you kind of want that happy medium. You want it to be right in the middle so you can work on your head movement as well, okay? So working on your one twos, your jabs, and all of your different combinations, okay? Being in the correct range. Next is going to be working on moving, You're using your feet to move you around the target, sticking and moving, which is what they like to call it. So you don't have to be stationary. You can move, slip underneath, slip side to side, side to side, working your head movement. Again, simulating this as being a real opponent in front of you. Being erratic with your punches, okay? If you're having a hard time with the timing of this, and you hit it and you're just not getting the timing down, you can just work on the one-twos exclusively. Get the bag in front of you, you have your hands up, and slowly hit it. That way you don't get much rebound at first, okay? Now you can see I don't, I'm not getting the full extension on my punches, which is fine. If you guys are having a really hard time trying to figure out your timing, then work close with it. And then as you feel the timing of the bag on your, on your punches, okay, I feel good now, I feel good. You can start to step back a little bit. As you step back, you're gonna have to punch a little harder. But as you can see, now I'm getting the proper extension. My form might not be perfect, but you're getting the understanding of the timing down with this double end back. So if you're having a hard time getting the timing of it down, there's a small little adjustment you can make in your training. And fundamentally, it's not the best, but if you're having a hard time with timing, you can do that. So you can start up close, tap, tap it, tap it, as you feel comfortable with the timing of this bag and the rebound, start to slowly step back. You're gonna have to punch harder now, so you're gonna feel it more in your shoulders, which is a good thing, you're getting a better workout. But now, you get the timing. Now I'm getting closer again. So that's definitely gonna be very helpful for you, those of you that are having a hard time getting the timing right and getting it in there. And then from there, you can progress with that slowly. The hooks and the uppercuts, I'm gonna do in a different video. That's a little bit more advanced. But once you start getting that down, get the jab, the straight, the one, two down. You need to perfect that before you move on to the more difficult punches. Because a lot of time, if you rush through it, you don't even get the basic fundamentals down. So you wanna make sure that you have that nice foundation to start off with. So if you ever take anything away from this video, aside from getting a good double end bag, is making sure that your target is at the end of your punches, that you're getting the full rotation in your punches, okay? You're hitting this for finesse. It's a finesse bag for timing, hand-eye coordination. It's not a power bag. That's what the heavy bag is for, okay? And making sure that you simulate this being a real opponent, okay? You don't want to get complacent. Just stand in front of it, okay? You want to make sure you move, stick and move. Don't be predictable. And then lastly, if you're having a hard time with the timing of it, you can make some modifications to help yourself out. Again, get real close to it and just tap it. Feel the rhythm of the bag as you tap it. And then you can really extend your punches to get the timing down. So I hope this video helped you guys out with using this double line bag. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll put the link in the description box where I got this ringside double line bag. 
I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.